today I'm going to talk about how SP Help can help speed up your development. All right, so let's talk about SP Help. When you're in SQL Server, and specifically when you're in SQL Server Management Studio, like you see up here, when you're sitting in that and you're working on some development and you need to know more about the object that you're trying to work on, whether it's a table, a view, or a store procedure, you can use SP Help. So let's look at how you use that. I'm gonna go into the VentureWorks database here and uh, I'm just gonna select, um, heck, let's select from the error log to start with here. So I'm gonna do a new query and I'm just gonna do a select and I'm gonna go from dbo.errorlog. And we'll see that there's no information in there because I'm not really working in this system or in this database. But um, if we wanna know more about this error log table, there's a couple ways to go about it. One, you can click in here and expand these and look at all the columns and the keys and the constraints and triggers. And let's go to indexes and expand that. So we, we have all, the, all that information here. But if you're working in a long store procedure, you may not want to keep going from table to table, and you may not want to find all the tables sitting inside of um, the object explorer over here. So many times people will come in, they'll say, well, SP underscore help, and that's a stored procedure that's built into a SQL server. Um, you put a couple ticks in there, and then you put the object name. So we'll go dbo.error log. Highlight that and execute it and it's gonna give you all the information about that object. So in this case, it tells us in this first section, it says, this is, uh, has a name of error log. It's owned by DBO. It's a user table versus like a view or a store procedure. And then down in here, it tells you about all the columns. So we've got uh, columns, the first column here is error log ID. It's an integer. It's a length of four. Second column is error time and it's actually a date time and that date time has a le length of eight bytes. Um, well, that first one was four bytes, eight bytes. And then we go into this username and it has a length of 256 bytes. And then error number, those are integers you see there. Um, and then we have uh, error procedure, which is the in var char 252. So those are some of the columns in this table. And as we move down, um, we can also see there's an index on it. It has a clustered unique primary key index um, on the error log ID, which is that very first column, which is an integer. And then down here we have some constraints. So first off, we have a default constraint sitting down here of get date. So whenever a record's entered, it's going to insert the current date time into um, the error time, which is a second column there. So you don't ever have to insert that. It'll automatically insert for you the default to that. Um, and then we have this primary key constraint. Um, and if you look um, over here at the object explorer again, you're gonna see that all the columns are there and these are the same information. Um, we have the key columns, the primary key column. Um, we have the constraint right there. And then we have the index. Um, now it can, it can when you're working real fast and you're trying to develop fast, it can become slow and tedious to type SP help all the time. So many times the way you interact with this is you're going to hold down alt key and hit F one. So let me show you how that's done. Um, I'm going to highlight DBO dot air log and I'm going to hold down alt F one and it gave me the SP help. It's a shortcut to SP help. So, um, it's going to just highlight what you're looking at, Alt F1, and it'll do the SP help for you. Now, let's go back for a second and let's look at a different table. So, if I want to look at um, this human resources table, let's do SP underscore help, tick tick, and I'm going to go in and type department. We're going to see if this works for us. And it didn't like what we did here. So there is an error. It says the object department does not exist in the database. So this is because we don't have the schema in front of it. So the first one was DBO error log. Um, 
let's try that one again for a second. And we typed in DBO dot error log and it worked. But now what happens if I take DBO off? It still works. So it'll default to DBO um, if you, you know, as a schema, but department table doesn't have a DBO dot table in there, right? So it doesn't know what to do with department. But what is the schema? If we go back over here to department, it's human resources dot. So we need human resources dot department. And now that will run. So let's do the Alt F1 on it again. So if I just put in, I'll just drag it over. And if I highlight the whole thing, do Alt F1, and we have um, SP help and it all worked out just fine. Uh, what happens if I just highlight error log and do alt F1? That works. Um, because again, it knows that DBO dot, it just puts that on the front. That was the default schema. If I do alt F1 on the department, we get the same error we did when we did SP help. So alt F1 is just a shortcut for SP help. Uh, let's look at two more objects real quick. Um, let's move on from tables and let's go check out a couple of views. So if we just do this employee view, all F1, the main difference I want you to see here is that the employee table or the, the name of this object is a V employee. It's owned by DBO, which is interesting. I would have thought it said it's human resources here, but, um, and then I guess that's the owner, not the schema. But here is uh, the type is view. That's the main thing to notice here is, is V underscore employee. Um, this, this is an actual view and not a table. Again, you can see all the columns. Some of these columns co probably come from multiple tables and different tables, but they're all listed here um, as the view. And now let's go to see what it looks like when we do a stored procedure. Let's just do this, uh, get bill of materials, all F1. And it tells us that this, again, this is a stored procedure, but it also tells us the parameters. And you're, you're gonna be able to get that here also. Um, and, and you'll be able to see the same stuff if you drill over here on the Object Explorer. Um, but many times you're working on a big, I guess, let me do this. Here's, here's the workflow. So if I wanted to modify one of those views, um, say I'm working on this department view here. And so I go in and I say script the view and let's alter um, into a new query window. Okay, so now I've got this view over here. I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit so we can see more. So this view goes against multiple tables, right? And so Many times you may want to add something like I want to add the person, another thing from person. I would highlight that alt F1 and I'm sitting below here. Now I can see what's all in there. And so if I want any more information, I can just copy one of these. Maybe I want the, um, the email promotion. I could just copy that control C comma, and then I can say P dot and drop that column in there. And then if we want to get something out of human resources, we simply come in here, Alt F1. Oh, what was it I wanted? Oh, I wanted, let's see, let's go after start date. And so we just grab it with a Control C, come down here. It's Employee Department History, EDH, EDH, and now we've got that in there. And this would, you know, that that that's the workflow of how you use SP Help.